This one hits close to home for me because recently I was grinding through a massive influx of stress between finishing up my dissertation, preparing for my PhD defense, and at the same time, keeping physionic going. During that time, I had also been researching all the studies on different cognitive enhancers. Some of them I've covered already, but one that really piqued my interest was rhodiola rosea. I'd like to show you the studies that I analyzed on it while I also describe my experience using it during the most stressful time of my life. The effects were remarkable and repeatable, but I'll explain in a bit. First, the science. I found six studies on rhodiol rosea, which I'm going to abbreviate rosea from now on, and cognition effects. For example, this one, the researchers randomized military cadets around 20 years of age that were under significant stress into the rosea condition or the placebo. Interestingly, the uh, placebo contained more than inactive ingredients, which would normally be a big uh, no-no because it introduces new variables, but the amounts added were tiny, so it seems unlikely that it would actually have an effect. The main difference between the two conditions was still the rosea. If we look at the results, we have four groups. Two controls, with the most important being the placebo condition. Then two rosea concentrations, low and high. The light gray being the before supplementation and the dark gray being the after supplementation. We're looking at the results of a cognitive test, so the higher the bar, the better. There are a few weaknesses of this data. One, the before condition of the placebo seems higher, which might indicate some different between the groups at the beginning of the study. Unfortunately, the second weakness is that there aren't any statistical comparisons between the conditions, only the before and after within each condition. Also, the researchers never indicate clearly if those big bars upwards for the rosea conditions actually are statistically significant, which uh, is difficult to assess because they fail to mention some other key information like standard error for those in the statistics know, you'll understand. So in truth, we can't make much of this data, but we don't have to rely on that data. We can also look at other like this. Oh, and real quick, I'm going to go ahead and tell you I'm leading you down a path that I full well know is going to lead to a dead end. So if you think this story is going to be straightforward, you're in for a rough ride. Anyway, what wonderful looking data. Here, we're looking at error rates in cognitive tests. So as you can imagine, the higher the bar, the worse. This time, we have clear designations for statistical significance with both control groups showing worse results, yet no difference in the rosea conditions. That's a point in favor of rosea, but check this out. Not only does rosea improve accuracy, but it also reduces mental fatigue. Don't be fooled, the rosea conditions switch sides on us. They're on the left now. And the higher the bar, the better. Remember, when I nerdishly said something about standard error before, those lines coming out of the bars are what I'm talking about. Notice how they're present now, but weren't before. Anyway, there's an improvement in the rosea condition. Okay, I've led you down this path long enough, but the other shoe has to drop. I'm tempted to throw all of this data out the window. Why? Well, the researchers used the wrong statistical test for most of their data. They used a student t-test and a man Whitney test. If we pop open the last data set again, they're clearly making multiple comparisons, yet using tests that would otherwise be used for what's known as a two-sample comparison, two groups being compared only. The appropriate test here is a Kruskal-Wallis test. These kinds of errors are devastating to interpreting results, unfortunately. A fun fact, I was paranoid about getting this part incorrect, so I paid a statistician to double check my work here. And sure enough, he confirmed everything that I just outlined for you. The researchers screwed up. Funny enough, these researchers also made a similar mistake. It's this kind of stuff that I cover in my course on how to analyze and apply studies to your own life. I know I mention it a lot, but if you rely solely on AI or reading summaries of studies 
you miss major errors like this. If you're interested in learning how to detect these problems and to learn how to apply this kind of research to your life, I'd highly encourage that you check out my course. It's linked. But look, I didn't point this out as an ad for my course, although I certainly won't miss the opportunity. I'm also pointing it out because it changes the whole tone of this discussion. It sets us back to square one, or it almost does, because we're actually in luck because we don't need to rely on these studies alone. There are actually well-performed studies like this one. In this case, the researchers recruited men and women who were suffering from signs of fatigue syndrome and separated them into two groups, a true placebo group or rosea. In this study, the researchers showed not only improvements in cognitive tasks, but reduced variability in the consistency of cognitive performance. Essentially, these people became better at consistently showing better performance. None of this was experienced in the placebo condition. What was also fascinating about this study is the measure of the feeling of burnout. Those on Rosea experienced reductions in their feelings of burnout. People also tended to feel better overall. And as much as I just shot down these two studies, they show consistent improvements in fatigue and well-being for whatever that's worth. Now, there are other studies like this one, and across a number of metrics like these, there were only improvements, short-term and long-term, from the consistent consumption of rosea. But, yes, the dreaded ass. This was not placebo-controlled trials, which weakens the study interpretation even if it agrees with the previous studies. Okay, let me tell you my personal experience with uh, Rhodiola rosea and how to think about this research in totality. I'm also going to cover the effect that uh, Rhodiola rosea has on depression and sleep along with optimal dosing if you're interested for the Physionic Insiders version of this video. There's a link in the description if you're interested in joining. As I mentioned, my experience was under the conditions of high strain dealing with my dissertation, my defense in front of uh, the medical school, and obviously running physionic. So I decided to start doing drugs. I, I mean, supplements. I bought some Rhodiola rosea and popped a few pills. Within about 45 to 60 minutes, I noticed a significant difference. It felt like my stress had detached from my body and uh, mind. I felt much better, much calmer. It's like it took the edge off. That's not to say that it eliminated all stress, but it felt like lifting a boulder off my chest. Obviously the boulder had to be at least a ton because your boy can bench press, you hear? <laughs> okay, no, but seriously, it, it made a difference for me. Now, come on, if you've been with Physionic for some time, you know this wasn't a controlled experiment. It could have been a placebo effect, but I have tried other anxiolytics with little to no effect. This was the first that had a profound effect. Still, it could still be a placebo. Anyway, a friend of mine was also going through a really stressful period in his life, and he's really resistant to taking anything, but I convinced him to do drugs with me. I mean, supplements. And he was genuinely surprised because he experienced something very similar. Again, as a good scientist, it's entirely possible that it was my priming him to believe an effect was going to be present. No way of knowing. But let's do away with my personal experience and return to the conclusion on Rodiel Rosea's cognitive effects. Call me biased, but I'm leaning towards it having an effect. And no, it's not because of my personal experience, but rather the fact that multiple studies show consistent improvements, especially true in people who suffer from chronic stress and fatigue from that stress. It's true, there are some less than desirable quality studies, but in totality, including this study that I didn't even discuss because, well, actually it wasn't placebo controlled, the evidence still leans in the direction of an effect. Granted, I would still like to see better quality studies to be certain, but with the few quality studies, they indicate effectiveness. But if you aren't convinced, maybe consider this other compound and its effects on cognition.